Hi, this is Tyson Auctioner, and today I want to help you learn about sediment deposition using Stokes Law. Sediment deposition is typically initiated by a decrease in the flow velocity. We can approximate the settling velocity of a particle using Stokes Law, which tells us that for a spherical particle, the settling velocity is proportional to the radius squared. Now to apply Stokes Law, we need some assumptions. We're assuming that the soil particles or the sediment are spherical. That may be reasonable uh, for sand. Those sand particles uh, do tend to be relatively spherical. Uh, it's probably not a great assumption for clay particles which tend to be platy. So just bear that in mind as we apply this. We're also assuming that the suspension is dilute enough so that the particles don't interact with each other, bumping into each other or influencing each other's velocity. We're also assuming that the flow uh, of the fluid past the particles is laminar, it's not turbulent. With those assumptions, uh, we're ready to talk about Stokes' Law. Imagine here we have a uh, spherical particle that is uh, falling through a fluid and it has forces acting upon it. There's a uh, downward force due to gravity and there is an upward drag force acting on this particle. There's also a buoyant force and that has been incorporated in this diagram uh, with the force associated with gravity and, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Stokes law tells us that the drag force is equal to 6 times pi times eta which is the viscosity of the fluid times r the radius of the particle and times u which is the terminal velocity. That's the velocity that the uh, particle reaches when it's no longer accelerating through the fluid. The force of gravity we can calculate in a straightforward manner. Uh, here we have an expression for the volume of a sphere and we multiply that volume by the difference in density between the density of the particle rho subscript s and the density of the fluid rho subscript f. So this is what I meant when I said we're, we're accounting for the weight of the particle itself as well as the buoyant force of the fluid on the particle. And then G here is the acceleration due to gravity. Now at terminal velocity, F subscript G and F subscript D must be equal to each other because there's no acceleration. So we can... Uh, plug uh, those uh, expressions for FD and FG into this relationship and solve for the velocity. And When we do that, we find that um, we get this expression where the radius has been replaced now with the particle diameter D. Let's consider some examples. Imagine we have a pulse of sediment laden runoff and it's delivered into a pond. I want us to calculate approximately how long it would take for soil particles with the following diameters to settle to a depth of one meter. Let's do a calculation for particles that would be considered fine sand, five times 10 to the minus two millimeters. For particles that would be considered uh, in the silt size category, 5 times 10 to the minus 3 millimeters. And for particles that would be considered in the clay size category, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 millimeters. We'll set uh, the viscosity of the fluid to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter per second. And we'll assume the density of the solids is 2,650 kilograms per cubic meter. 
Let's take the first example here where the diameter of the particle is 5 times 10 to the minus 2 millimeters. Again, this would represent a fine sand. Plugging in our values, we get the following expression. You can see now here is the uh, expression for the diameter, but I've changed the diameter from millimeters to meters uh, to make the units consistent. Uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And here we have 2,650 for the density of the solid. And we have 1,000 representing the density of the fluid. And on the bottom here we have 18 times the viscosity. And we can see that the, uh, the kilogram units are going to cancel out from the top and the bottom and the units we'll be uh, left with will be meters per second. If we, why don't you take a moment, uh, you can maybe pause the video and punch this into your calculator and see what result you get. If you've worked through that calculation you should have found that you got 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second as the settling velocity for these particles of the specified diameter. Now we want to estimate how much time is required for the particles to fall one meter. We're going to make the assumption here that the particles will reach their terminal velocity instantaneously. And that's usually an acceptable approximation uh, for these type of problems. In that case then the settling time T is just the uh, depth of settling that we're interested in, one meter, divided by the settling velocity. And so if we do that calculation we see that it takes 445 seconds or 7.4 minutes for these particles which are the size of fine sand to settle to a depth of one meter. Now let's change the situation. Let, let's go from considering a sand sized particle to considering a silt sized particle. So here now the diameter changes to 5 times 10 to the minus 3 millimeters, so one order of magnitude smaller. Again we plug that into our equation, converting the units to meters. We get 10 to the minus 6 here. And let me ask you again to pause the video and plug this into your calculator. Upon doing that, you should see that the result is 2.25 times 10 to the minus 5 meters per second. Now again, we want to calculate the time that's required to fall 1 meter. And we do that in the same way as before. The depth of fall divided by the velocity and we obtain 4.45 times 10 to the 4th seconds or 12 hours. So I want you to notice that when we, in, when we decrease the diameter one order of magnitude, we decrease the settling velocity by two orders of magnitude. That's the fundamental kind of relationship that you need to understand. So as a result, the settling time is much greater. Let's do that third example now. What if the particles were clay sized particles? Here we have a diameter of 5 times 10 to the minus 4 millimeters. Everything else is the same as before so now when I convert to meters I have 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters for the diameter. Again Take a moment and plug that into your calculator. When you do that, you should find that the settling velocity is 2.25 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second. So again, we dropped the diameter by one order of magnitude, and as a result, the settling velocity decreases by two orders of magnitude. So the time to fall one meter, then, is given by the same expression and the result is 4.45 times 10 to the 6 seconds or 51 days. 
hopefully these calculations have given you some physical understanding of the implications of Stokes' law. And I hope that when you think it through and work back through these calculations that we just covered, you can understand why so often if we have a soils that have high clay contents and we have uh, erosion and sediment transport of that sediment which is rich in clay we end up with these reddish or orangish colored ponds uh, which are so common here in Oklahoma where I live. Thank you.